Hello friends and welcome back to Emma Russell Studio. So I'm Emma if you're new here and I paint a lot of watercolor tutorials for beginners and I also share little vlogs about my life. But today I wanted to dive into color opacity and you know what the difference is between opacity and value, maybe kind of how they're intermixed. And I wanted to create a little color chart with you a little exercise of, you know, um, how opacity and value work and how it's really important in developing your watercolor skill and how it's going to help you as you grow as an artist and start creating pieces. So let's grab our paper, our brushes, and our paints and let's get started. So today we are going to be creating this little opacity slash value sheet because it is super important to know when you are working with watercolor, really like how your colors are gonna blend together and how much water you might need in a certain area. So a lot of times when you layer, you know, you're gonna start out with the lightest color here and you're gonna increase your pigment and decrease your water to create more bold and vivid layers. So we're kind of going to go over this method of what I like to call the watery cocoa to thick cocoa method. So you're going to need a little sheet of watercolor paper and you're going to need your round brush and some water and we're going to just go right in. So we're going to go with circles and I want you to just paint a circle here on your page and we're going to be working with some sap green so I want you to just grab a tiny bit of pigment on your brush just wipe it off on your cup and just mix it around so this is the lightest form it's almost like it's just water with a hint of pigment then we are going to go to our next circle where it is more of a regular cocoa right you have a little bit more pigment like Think of the pigment as your hot cocoa mix, and you're gonna put a little bit more in there. And you add your third circle. You're gonna add a lot more pigment, so this is like your cocoa with milk, right? It's creamier, you have more of a creamy consistency, and you can see the color a little bit more. And then, Next is our really thick cocoa. Like it has so much cocoa powder in it. You can barely tell that there's water. It's like sl sl slushy, slushy. It is like sludge. <laughs> and you're just gonna keep adding more and more pigment to that. Actually dry your brush off a little on your paper towel if you need to and add more pigment there. And there you have it. You have your different opacities. And this kind of shows you how you can really control your watercolor. So for instance, with that, let's go and grab our thick cocoa. So we have a lot of pigment on our brush, right? You can see right here, lots and lots of pigment, barely any water. And we are going to paint a leaf with that. So angle your brush, 45 degree angle. I have a leaf painting video if you'd like to know more about leaves where you can go over all the methods with me and I will link that in my description. And see how opaque it is and how much control you have, right? It's not going all over the page. Now let's lighten it more and you can see how it's still not going over the page because you kept the paper dry first, but you have a lot more wiggle room. It's more of this regular cocoa consistency. And you could even play around and add a little bit more pigment and let that spread around. So you can see that there's a lot of versatility in it, right? So your opacity or color value can change throughout your paintings. A lot of times, like if you have a light sky, you might want to use something like our watery cocoa. If you have some more details, you're definitely going to be going in with a more opaque, less water, more paint, just like our really thick 
cocoa over here. So that basically wraps up our color value and opacity. Hey, thanks so much for joining me today. I had so much fun creating these color value swatches and opacity exercises with you and I hope that you had a really great time and I hope it helped you learn a little bit more about watercolor and about how much control you can actually have with your brush and with the amount of water you use and that watercolor doesn't have to feel like it's out of your control. It's a medium that you can definitely adjust the pigment with. So thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and you can check out more of my work on Instagram at Emma Russell Studio. Until next time.